Welcome to On The Chain, it's Chip. I'm back in the OTC seat, back here with none other than co-host Jeff. What's going on, Jeff? It's what been a while. Up, Chip? Good to see you here, man. Thank Good you for holding down the floor. I really appreciate that. Well, tonight we got a lot to talk about that we're going to dig into. So first off, is crypto headed for a pump, like a pump? And what about XRP uh, liquidity? You know, what about this uh, loan action over there with uh, Ripple? And then none other than Pat Toomey. He's a senator. He asked the industry for a little bit of feedback, a little bit of clarity. And boy, does the community respond. Jeff, you ready to get this puppy started? Let's do this. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Welcome to On The Chain. And Jeff, before we get started here, I just want to go ahead and I want to give a big shout out to Permission, permission Permission.io. You know how you're out there surfing around and, you know, they're basically the big tech is basically making money off of your data. Why? Because they know every little aspect of you. They follow you and they're serving up ads and they're getting paid on those ads. Well, we like to flip the script. Permission.io allows you to earn the ask token. A-S-K ask permission you go ahead and opt in what data you feel comfortable sharing you're already sharing it that's the best part and for that you can earn crypto it's real easy it takes about three four minutes to get started you go to permission.io jeff would you drop that link in there from the keep jeff's going to drop a link and if you're getting a little bit of bonus ask if you go ahead in there and it also helps to show out a little bit too we get a little bit of bonus as well so everybody benefits that bottom line is you go install the browser plugin fill out a little bit of information and then you are earning ask along the way and jeff i don't know if you talked about what happened last week with the token but i had a little bit of a a 3x run up for a little bit we did talk about it yeah so that was actually pretty fun to see and um yeah just on some announcement of some really good news with a partnership with google and i'm sure they're hard at work you know when we had charlie and he was talking about some other things that are coming down the pike which, uh, which we'll look forward to as well. So, Jeff, how the hell are you? It's been a week and a half since I've been here. Man, it's crazy. It is insane. You know, and- the community was holding up real well. We had a blast. You know, we brought yeah. in some new people. It was really cool. That's it, man. It's it's good to have you back on. Missing the banter. You know, it's kind of like oh, man. it was an Die. ongoing, uh, you know, week week and a half plus it and man it's a lot it's a lot to do and you covered it jeff brilliantly every once in a while i got to pop in but i had a lot going on last week at family in town clients in town you know entertaining but i snuck away here and there for get a little word in what's up jeff what's up you know otc family smartest people in crypto all that kind of stuff so that was really cool to get all that stuff in there check that out look at one rough reek and he pops the super sticker right there thank you reek and really appreciate that and big supporter, OG of the channel. Thank you for getting us started tonight, man. Can't say enough about it. So, guys, best thing you can do. That's right. I'm back Uh-oh. and I'm live, Jeff baby. Is back. Damn right, I'm back and I'm all rested up and I got lots of energy. I got lots of chip pent up energy and I can't wait to get it out. So, yeah. Also, right. too, guys, yeah. best thing you can do is tweet this out right now. Go ahead and send a tweet out. Invite all your friends, your neighbors, you know, maybe even people you don't even talk to that much. Just tell them, hey. Come check out on the chain. You want to learn about crypto? The best place to start. So, Joe Chip, there's been, I, I mean, it doesn't stop, right? The news it never stops. Going, crypto pumps, crypto dumps, XRP, incremental, but there's still there's still a ton of things going on. And, and over the past week and a half, we dissected a lot of things. So it's going to be important. One of the things you brought up, Pat Toomey. We'll get to that later. But I think right off the bat, <clears throat> dig into some of the news that's going on here as it pertains to the SEC, because every single day is a gift. You know, and it just seems like it's constantly, you know, kind of churning. I, I put some stuff in the keep too, where you can see that the SEC does stuff on behalf of investors where they should be focusing attention. We'll talk about that later. But this one, you know, Chip, there were some uh, links in there from James Philan. Filan is the way Filan. you pronounced it. Yeah, it's James, Jimmy, Jimmy Filan. the James Filan. Yeah, we got to get that. Jimmy J. Yeah, we got to get that right. And um, Well, yeah. we'll never pronounce anyone's name 100% correctly. Probably butchered well, everybody's name since well, we, we started. Have, Jeff, we know it is Filan. 
That's not, it, it is finally, he's officially announced it. And um, even after he said that, I think I'm pretty sure it a couple of times, but it happened. That's what this, <laughs> what you tune in for, for the flub ups. Sometimes things don't go always as planned. And that's oh, sometimes I'm how it goes. On the chain, he'll be full on. <laughs> Filing. It's like an oh. I, Jeff, like an F and an I with a Lin at the end. Filing. So we've got this. So uh, Jimmy Filan put this out. He says, Ripple defendants file motion to compel the SEC to produce documents showing whether the SEC employees were permitted to trade XRP mm. and other digital assets. Now, Interesting. now if we look at that? this, well, I think it's phenomenal. And if you yeah. look at this, the court has given the SEC until September 3rd, which is what, next week, Jeff? It's coming up. It's like Friday, right? Isn't it Friday or something like that? Friday. It's either Thursday or Friday. I don't know. I can't do the math. It's a lot to think about. Right. To, to respond to the Ripple defense, we could always pull it up. Let's talk about it for another six minutes. Let's, let's. Is it Friday? Does anybody know? Hey, pull it up. Does anybody know what the heck could the third be? Is it Friday? Let's see. So, yeah, they'll let us know. It that, is that, Friday. It yeah, is Friday. I, thought, I thought so. I was just trying to do the math quick in my head. So the court has given the SEC until September 3rd of 2021 on Friday of next week to respond to the Ripple defendant's motion to compel regarding whether SEC employees were permitted to trade this XRP and on the other digital assets. And it was text only order. So usually sometimes on the docket, when you look at the docket, it'll be a text only or they'll actually have a signed order. And this was a uh, just a text. That's why he put it was a text order on the docket, meaning there's no separate written order um, was absolutely filed. Check this out. Look at this in full form. XRP supercar. supercar. Nice crushing it with the super sticker man really appreciate that awesome so this is kind of cool and then like we dig into this a little bit here so if you think about it though if throughout this entire period of time (laughs) there are employees at the sec that have been investing in xrp (laughs) and you know there there has to be some reveal on that and it's going to be interesting to see how they really handle this i mean it's (laughs) You know, overall, there's no clarity coming out of the SEC. We know that, uh, but yeah, you know, let's see what he has to say here. I want to see how they uh, how they well, break this down. I want to I want to just focus on this one paragraph right here because it says in Let me see if I can get this a little bit bigger here. There we go. Oh, holy cow, that's a little too big. Um, it says in June of 2021, this court granted the defendants, meaning defendants, obviously uh, Ripple, uh, Garling House, Larson, to uh, compel the SEC. When they say compel, like must do it right you have to do it you have to do it uh, to produce its trading policy regarding the digital assets your honor found that defendants request met the threshold for relevance now jeff this is june okay we've got a number of occurrences with this kind of happening over and over again but i guess if you're above it all and you're the sec well what the hell i mean you can just do whatever you want right jeff i guess it they seems can just... that way it must be good it must be nice it's good to be the king. You ever see that movie, uh, the History of the World, the Part SEC. One? Yeah, it's good, it's good to be the king, be. man. It's always good to be the king. So and be careful it's... if you're going to be sent to Detroit. So was that that uh, one? No, that was a different movie. No, no, no this, yeah, that was a pride <laughs> movie. <laughs> completely different movie. That was a completely different. And it said the SEC accordingly produced the defendants a January 16, 2018 policy entitled "Ethics Guidance Regarding Digital Assets" that took effect on January 19, 2018. Um, the policy shows that until January 19th in 2018, the SEC had not adopted or imposed any policy restricted SEC employees from trading in digital assets. And, and we had referenced this um, a couple yeah, of ago, actually, this no, specific, we really, that specific statement. We really had. And the funny thing about it is, is you know, it's kind of like, what are they trying to hide here? And w- really what's going on? I mean, were people, were they trading it? And the funny part about it is, is that quite honestly, if the SEC employees were trading in digital assets and there was there was no official governance on it, well, we know from Pearson uh, Roisman and, and that statement they gave on that one case in July, they're like, yeah, it's kind of murky. We don't really know. It's kind of not really defined. And of course, we know about the letter that Deaton used and, um, in his filing and you know the one we talked about i think you went over and covered that as well last week no oh, yeah. it's like they keep stepping in it jeff it's just it's insanity really i've never seen anything like this you know not that i've followed a lot of these sec cases but this one just seems botched you know i mean every step of the way where when you know you're on the wrong side and you keep fighting you know at some point you have to give up <laughs> and in this scenario it almost seems like, you know, they they can't. 
They can't give up. They have to. They should. But they can't. No. You know, for whatever reason, I don't, I don't know what's compelling them to continue this case forward. You know, are they going to lose space? Is there an ulterior agenda um, that they're trying to, you know, continue? I, you know, it's it's so confusing. I mean, is this, you know, there's probably attorneys out there, which we had an attorney on right now. I mean, is this is this normal when the other side knows their case is a disaster, that they're going to keep fighting it regardless and keep tripping over themselves? At some point, you got to throw in the towel and be like, hey, you know what, judge, other side, you know, I think we're we're done. Well, the SEC uh, has a lot know. to lose here, Jeff. So that's part of it, right? Yeah. So, you know, the old saying is if there's a tall fence and you're like, I got to get over the fence, you throw your hat over the fence, you're like, now you got to go with the hat. And that's where they are right now. They've thrown the hat over there, case is filed, and they just keep tripping over uh, time and time again. And I'll tell you what, that fair defense notice is alive and well. I mean, it's devastating to have uh, somebody in our community share an, 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 a letter that they received from the SEC saying, well, we don't really know if it's, if it's a security or not. And then about a month and a half before, six weeks prior to the filing of the suit. And then you got two commissioners who don't know. So I think that's a pretty devastating shot. And this one here too from James Filan says, uh, in the case of the SEC versus Ripple, the court has granted motions to seal regarding one, the Slack communications dispute, and two, yep. the privileges dispute the motion to seal were granted pending resolution of the underlying motions. Both are text only orders. And then here's the screenshot. That's exactly what it looks like. And they're all numbered too. So that's docket 316, 317, order 301, motion to seal. And that's fine. You know, I think I think sealing some of this stuff is actually a good idea. It's some good faith on both sides. Hey, we'll seal this, you'll seal that. You know, it's not really for public consumption. Although, quite honestly, I guess there should be some transparency, but Jeff, what if somebody in a Slack communication, because, you know, like I said, we use in our company, sometimes you're joking around like you're, you know, you're in a, you're in a chat, you know, group chat where you're hitting a bunch of people and you're sending something or saying good morning or whatever. It's like that to me would fall back on the defense of what SEC has been using. Sorry, man, I wasn't really speaking in it. And the professional opinion of my job just as a personal opinion. Like well, I exactly. wish we They're going to have to pull that into context. You know, if they got to review every single line item. I mean, at, at some point you try to remove it out of context, but then you could put that, you know, I, but you're right. I mean, when you start getting into every single last one of them, but look at this, Ann Egg is saying Sheriff Steven Seagal under investigation by the SEC for crypto shenanigans. I believe he's living over in Moscow or something like that right now, but regardless where he lives, they're dragging him back because there were certain shenanigans that were going on with what he was doing potentially, who knows, it'll come out. But when the SEC takes action against stuff like that, then you know that's what the law was intended for, right? It's supposed to single out, you know, what's going, look at what's going on right now with uh, Peloton, right? There's all these uh, injuries as a result of their treadmill and they knowingly are ignoring the warnings on the treadmill and so, but the SEC is getting involved in it because you have investors that are investing. It's a dangerous product for the users and those around them. But I was shocked to see Department of Homeland Security and all these other entities are getting involved in the Peloton case. You know, here with Ripple, you just see the SEC, you know, but it's just like all of a sudden everyone's beating up, you know, over there. But th those are the types of cases you would anticipate, right? Exactly. This, well, one, man, this is just, it's still... Well, but the thing about it is, though, I mean, I don't I don't care. Look, I mean, it doesn't matter where you're living. I mean, suppose you have to come back or you have family here. You want to go. You got to come back to the U.S. You don't want a judgment against you, especially. So it's just ridiculous that we allow this to happen. And this was another story we had in here that thank you for reference to that. But this is the uh, the SEC won a judgment against actor Steven Seagal after he ignored the court order. He just ignored it. John. This is what kills me. And the crypto hey, fraud. He's okay. He's, he's the actor. And that's, yeah, he's, he's like above it all. He doesn't have to touch him. Guy. It's okay. So, hey, man, um, remember when his movies were good in the beginning and then they got really bad? They got really bad. Yeah, when he was doing the Kung Fu stuff, it was actually pretty interesting. Famous actor agreed to pay a disgorgement of more than $330,000 to settle the crypto fraud case he was involved in. SEC alleged that Seagull failed to disclose he was promised 250000 in cash. I just forgot about that. It's like, well, I mean, who forgets about $250,000, Jeff? 
and seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in tokens for promoting initial coin offering and ICO for Bitcoin to Gen. The SEC settled the case with Seagal back in February of twenty twenty. So we're looking back like over a year ago, a year and a half ago. Payment and says, "I'm done." She's like, later, ah, right. we'll just "See you later." I'm gonna go <laughs> ahead. We put that in. Probably kept that in crypto. And he probably could have paid it too. And the judge, uh, Friday order means the SEC can go through Seagal's business manager to try and collect the remaining 255000 the actor owes the U.S. government. And you know, Jeff, if you owe money to the government, they're going to get their money. I mean, you know, that's just the way it works. They'll track you down. They'll do whatever they can do. Uh, oh, when it doesn't Peyton, matter what country you live in. It doesn't matter who granted you citizenship, even if it was the president of Russia himself. That <laughs> seems to be irrelevant. Yeah, and Seagal, he's living in Russia, like you stated, and Vladimir Putin issued a presidential decree in 2016 granting the actor Russian citizenship. I don't think he cares, to be honest with you. And you know what? This is what people don't, they, they forget too. Outside of the SEC, nobody cares, Jeff. Why, nobody why cares. To begin, why did he leave in 2016 to begin with? He had some weird beef going on. He was like, I'm out of here. He was grumbling about something. I remember it was like a big thing where he was like a big powwow. He got all angry and stuff. Isn't, I didn't even, I don't even remember it. Does anybody well, how do you know? Here? How are they sending the demands, by the way? He's living in Russia. Are they sending it in Russian? They send in carrier pigeons over there? I mean, it said oh, yeah, that he not responded to repeated <laughs> demands after he made the initial payment. He's like, I'll put a little bit down. I'll put a little bit down on there. And he goes, then I'll put the rest over here on black or red. He went gambling. Who knows what happened to it? So anyway, that's that's one of those uh, sort of deals. Hey, Jay, uh, Matt LaRoche is saying the SEC have lost both their arms and a leg and <laughs> claiming it's just a flesh wound. It's a flesh wound. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> so much. I just saw that movie today. I just rewatched, you know, half of that movie. Didn't see the whole thing. What a great movie that was. Yeah, and I made the reference with the clients and I said, you remember this? You remember Bring Out Your Dead? Bring Out Your Dead. Bring, bring Out Your Dead. dead. <laughs> he goes, well, I'm not dead. You are now. <laughs> Give him a big old <laughs> shot to the head. I'm Some actually solid. getting better. <laughs> that Monty Python stuff is just solid, Jeff. It really oh, is man, some good stuff, great. right? So I wanted to um, I wanted to show this too because I saw this making the rounds on uh, crypto Twitter today, and this is none other than Bill Hinman. Just a little bit of a setup here. This is Bill Hinman. I want to get your take on what he has to say here, Jeff, because he's at a Georgetown Law event, and let's listen in to what he has to say here. I want to get the, I want to get the uh, OTC uh, fan chime in on this as well. Put some put some comments up there. But here we go. So we, we kind of tried to get that out there. Um, we also, uh, last summer, um, spoke a little bit more about how we were looking at some of the more um, decentralized and seasoned uh, digital assets like Bitcoin and uh, Ether on the Ethereum network. And we, we made it very clear that at this point, we don't see a, a reason to regulate those as securities or transactions in those instruments as securities at this point. I'm, I know we're going to get into more detail on this, but um, that was another uh, part of our exercise in terms of making it clear to the market how we look at these instruments. And Jeff, come on. We, it, I didn't we hear a personal opinion. We, we, but the one thing that he just said, though, out of all of that, he said, at this time, we don't feel that we need to regulate it as a security. So he left that open that at some future point in time, they could potentially change that. That's how it sounds to me. And they could easily back out of it. It was a very loosely kind of worded, uh, you know, way of saying that uh, we don't think that it's a security. <laughs> right. So Jeff Rome or Romy, however you pronounce it, uh, has a cool, has a really on Rome, Romy. Rome. I've heard of Romy too, because it's Romy, the, the famous, uh, Radio voice. The but entire -E? U.S. I I don't know. I thought it was, uh, maybe it's with Rome. Whatever. Right. Whenever in Rome, you pronounce it Rome. So the entire U.S. government, I feel, has let their citizens down. Not just in the crypto space. It's bizarro world right now. Everything's totally upside down. Sad movies. It yeah, is. it is a sad movie. It's like, is this real? Can I stop this one? Saw a really good meme on that today, and it was like a, one of those signs that people put out in front of their businesses. You know, with the big letters and the backlit letters. And it's like, can we just unplug the U.S. government and then plug it back in again, see if we do a reset? It always works on your computer, Jeff. I mean, it's a good idea, honestly. actually. That's the first thing you always do. Now, Edward is saying he identifies as we. So what are you going to do? <laughs> okay. By the way, Jeff, we probably shouldn't get into my two favorite pronouns because there are two things that I can't say on air. We don't want to get a strike, but one begins with F and the other one begins with U. Uh, just saying, just for the... 
Pronouns, if you want to use them, I like to use them. So I'm just saying Those if you want to. Yeah, that's my two favorite pronouns right there. So, you know, yeah. if you if you want if you, if you want to dig in, man, that's what we're gonna Thanks, dig in. He's actually French and he was saying yes. Oh, we 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 yeah, that's right. Yes, yes. That's yes. what he was saying. Oh, that's fine. I mean, that's good. I mean, some people identify as like old tech, you know, like you know, yeah. you might identify as like, you know, you might want to be Bitcoin, you know. Exactly. Well, from 11 yeah, years ago, maybe he's talking about himself in the fifth person. <laughs> there you go. Or, you know, you could uh, identify as old tech like you, you want to, I, you know, identify as Swift technology, Jeff. It's, uh, it's not hey, the I greatest, like but, it, but it's been around the longest, you know. And it's Swift. Swift. It's got Swift. the misappropriate name, too. They Speedy, the I mean. Terminology. They won the terminology. With it. Yeah, it's not, it's, not that, it's not that bright anyway. No. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing some other funny comments on here, too. Look at this right here. So, you know, uh, Michael um, Angelo says, you know, Hinman has no credibility. I think nobody really – who at the SEC right now has got credibility? It's like, you know, my street cred is, like, big. I am excelling in life, and I'm doing big things. It's always like – it's like a big crash into – that blows up the dirt and hammers it into the uh, – um, the earth. Yeah. I mean, I don't know who, I don't really know who's getting the credibility these days, but yeah, personal, personal opinion. Yeah. Two dub says, yeah, that's a personal opinion. But did you notice in that clip, Jeff, he did not say, by the way, this is my pretty, he said, no, we took a look at it. And I think we provided always guidance or clarity around it to make it clear. And yeah. at this time, see, that was like the part that actually made the most sense at this time. We don't feel like we can regulate it. I think but, that was key. But how, if, if, if you're going, if you're looking at 2014, you know, pre-ICO ETH versus, you know, XRP and then at today's XRP, I mean, this is where you really, the, the, the sad part of it is they just don't have the comprehension skills to understand. They get in, you know, we, we know that him and Matt with people. He's like, yeah, come on in the back room. Let's have a couple of cigars, drink a little scotchy poo little fun, you know, having a little bit of a time. And then what is that thing? Oh, yeah. Well, okay. Why is it decentralized again? Okay, great. And that's it. They don't know what they're doing. They're completely lost, Jeff. What do you got going on there? You got you got a heavy oh, stare going on there. No, I'm just, I'm just looking for something. You got a that's heavy stare. And my thing, look at, I slowed down too, so I can't help but change. Yeah, what are you doing over there? That's, I thought that's that's usually what my, my, my sort of, uh, my sort of thing right there. So my change in stare is partially that I'm streaming it at like five frames per second. I think you're back to almost normal here. So, you know, one of the things uh, last week, you know, and, and again, man, you did a great job of, you know, holding it down, holding down the, the fort. I know it's always it's more fun when there's somebody here. You can like throw some stuff off. Jeff, what do you think? How do you think that? And we can kind of laugh and joke around about it. And uh, I think you did masterful stuff last week, which was really great. By the way, here's a little, here's a quick hit. Every once in a while, I like a quick hit, and this, you know, um, that's not it. What the heck? Um, wow, that's not it. That's funny. I thought that was I thought that was it, but I guess apparently it's not. Okay, then. All right. Well, while we're doing that, let's just do kind of okay. Here it is. I know then we can bounce back into the uh, other stuff. What do you have before we get into this? Oh, I have it right here. I wanted to show. I wanted to throw this up. I want to stay on a little XRP action just for a little bit longer here. Well, that's to next year, we're gonna okay. Go well, that's go ahead. good. Yeah, go ahead. Bring your stuff. So, up. one of the cool things you brought in as a guest host last week was James Rule XRP, and I thought this was very telling. So he put this tweet out today. He said, "Let me ask you this, SEC." And again, you got to keep driving it home. You need more people to tweet this stuff, and you really got to drive it home. A check salary. XRP, check daily purchases of retailers with his uphold MasterCard, check bought Ripple on link, um, link, to, link, what is it called? Link to link to link, link to. to, yeah, link to INC. Yeah, he bought it on, so he actually used XRP to purchase Ripple stock, right? So, um, on link to then, yeah, received tips with Coil, check gives tips in YouTube chats, check. XRP, not a security. And there's James yeah. Rule's famous POW <laughs> check, right? And then yep. he goes even further down down into it. And then um, somebody posted this meme right here, which I thought was great. Um, it's like, Gary Gensler, you're going to protect investors, right? <laughs> protect investors, right? 
<laughs> it's like I love this meme because it, it it really does have a lot of legs. You can like really make it appropriate for everything. You know, it's like yes, look, he's not he's not moving on that at all, man. You know, he's not going to budge. He no, he's not to budging. Budge. You know why? Because he used to teach at MIT. Is that what it is? So I, I put this tweet, I responded to him, and I said, you know, we've received so many XRP tips sent to the, on the chain via Super Chat by James. James, thank you very much. XRP, not a security. How is it that everyone knows this except for the SEC? The SEC is about to find out the hard way and what we were just alluding to. And may the SEC forever be shamed and the SEC failed to protect investors. So, yeah, a couple little statements there, Jeff. Any thoughts on that? spot on man i you know i'm glad you i'm glad you hit that but you but you're right because the sec i mean now it's interesting because if you go back to previous sec cases where they lost they make a big noise about their opinion yeah. they lose the case but they never retract so they're out there and they they never they issue this little tiny statement someplace posted and it might show up on their website. Um, but other than that, you know, it's very, very minimal. And it's interesting, you know, that that's, that's how it is. But so they, they don't even suffer shame. So even, oh. even when we come out and we, you know, and, and we see the end result is that they lose of all this, they're still, they're just going to push it under, bury it, and they're going to move on with life. Oh, because no, no Jeff. one ever holds them accountable. There's no accountability. They have to do the shame walk like in Game of Thrones when they when one of the characters had a strip down while the whole town lined up there and they yelled shame, shame, something along those lines. But I think that's kind of what I think that's what they're going to do. I don't think it's going to go down like this, but I want to read this comment here. This is from Carl Eric B. Mills. And this is what I love about the community. Look at this positivity. Good evening. Happy Sunday. My fellow cryptonaires, thank you very much for your participation and the enjoyment of this great adventure with me, the dawn of a new era. Welcome to the new frontier. And that positivity just wow, exudes from this. Day. Right. And it's like, you know, nobody's getting down. Everybody shows up. And it's like, you want to fight? Go ahead, punch us. We punch back harder. You want to put something through in Congress? We'll get the entire world behind us. We don't care about the SEC but we care about what happens with our favorite digital asset and all of crypto. So I love, I love this going on, man. This is just, and that sounds stuff. like, and that sounds like the beginning of a show, right? right? You kind of get that statement right there. Yeah. I like that, man. That's really spot on stuff. So, Hey, so check this out. So SEC with all this stuff going on, and I know we touched on the whole line of credit thing with ripple before, but yeah. I think this is like, you know, a critical, you know, I don't want to say, you know, a fork for what they're doing, but it's a critical point in the overall objective of what RippleNet is offering to the global ecosystem, right? So we obviously have the financial institutions and the banks and moving money, but then you have to think about the SMEs. You have to think about big business. So there's businesses outside a financial institution that doesn't just need to move money, but they also rely on short-term loans and liquidity for lines of credit. So now with RippleNet being able to offer this, you know, what they call a send now, pay later with a line of credit, using ODL, using on-demand liquidity to fund lines of credit. I think you know, this is a massive step in the right direction. Now, they reference it, freeing up capital for your customers, cross-border transactions can be inefficient. At the same time, creating credit arrangements for each destination market is time-consuming. With a line of credit from Ripple, your financial institution can use XRP to complete instant low-cost cross-border transfers. We allow you to lock in a rate at the time of payment then re, uh, repay us when it's convenient for you for a small fee. So obviously, money's still moving through these financial institutions. They're referencing, you know, the customer movement. It's helping the whole ecosystem. I think it's amazing, right? I think it really it's a game changer uh, in the overall space, and they're highlighting this. What are your thoughts on on the significance? 
Yeah, well, I think I think Jeff, you know, we've been there. You know, when you have like a, a small medium enterprise, you know, this these are the smaller ones. These aren't the big conglomerates like the Googles of the world. But yeah, it's a very it plays in a very important role. But I will say this: that one of the things, like this, is what I love about Ripple, the company. Right? They're solving real problems. They're not out there wondering what because there's a lot of stuff out there that's just not really. It's not a problem for anybody, but they're going to go solve it for you. And in a scenario like this, where cash is tight. The problem is, is that you've got a lot of money tied up, right? So you got your receivables, you have stuff. And so you're, if you're doing enough in payments, and we're not even talking about big payments, 20,000, 40,000, look, you have to have liquid, you have to be liquid enough to be able to get that short term, really what it is like a bridge loan. And the rates are phenomenal. You, you, this is on par better than any bank in a bank. Now, I remember when I had one of my uh, start, what another company, I remember going to the bank, I had like million plus in receivables coming in that month, million and a half. And I had more even the next month coming in. And I said, I got into a cash crunch. I'm like, I need to go ahead. I've been a long term member of the bank personally. I've been doing this for a long time. And I'm like, look, I just need about $250,000 for a float for about 30 days. You know what they said, Jeff? Go pound sand. And um, I, I soon after that, I wasn't a member of that bank anymore, but this is just it. Came in, showed them all the stuff. And so this is what companies deal with often where they don't want to be put in a cash crunch. You pay a bunch of stuff. you got your receivables. you got your payables are coming in and out, but you also need to be able to send a payment. This right here is an absolute game changer in the SME space. This, this uh, you know, pay now, uh, what is it? What's the, uh, what's the phrase? I want to make sure I get it right there. Now, yeah, buy send now, now. Send send now, now pay, pay later. later. And you can do some short-term like, like bridge it. loans, 30 days, you know, and, and it's actually Amazing. pretty low interest to be able to float that money. And what a godsend that is, Jeff, just my, just for a lot of stuff that I've dealt with. And here's a sheesh burla. Early customer feedback on the line of credit beta shows that the service is helping money transfer service businesses make global transactions even more affordable for their customers. I think, you know, it's amazing. And here you go, valuable, improve working capital, efficient, start payments without having to manage your account balance, scalable, access any global market using one simple credit arrangement. I think this on its own, you know, if you don't have to keep turning towards all these different solutions and constantly renegotiating, you know, is amazing. Um, cost effective benefit from competitive rates that lower your cost of capital. I mean, that right there, you know, there are four really critical components that I think, you know, make a really strong case for this. Yeah, and you the rate lock too. Man. So you don't, you don't have any, well, they also you lock in a rate too. So you don't have Yeah, a, that's it. I like that. Yeah. That's another key thing too. Jeff, I wanted to put this up before, it just wasn't appropriate, but um, Oscar says, you know, if you look in the mirror, and say the SEC five times real quick, you summon Gary Gensler and he'll look uncomfortable for about a full minute. I know it sounds crazy, but you got to try it. I can just imagine him. He's like, when you're like, dude, what's Gary Gensler doing to my, you know, showing up here in my, yeah. So, dude, do you have that of, Gary? Gary. Yeah, we get, where's that Gary? Where is that Gary? Is that, did I add I that know, to we're gonna have to, We need to add it to our uh, lineup there because that thing's the funniest ever. <laughs> yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to load it up there. That uh, Gary thing, we'll throw it up there at some point. Gary, 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 Gary. All right, so it's like, uh, so I wanted to put this tweet out there. I really, every once in a while, I see something that really gets me lit up, Jeff. This one here, um, I don't know who this is, Clint Kisker. It's a, it's a crazy name, you can't say it three times fast or even five times fast, Clint Kisker. But I want to throw this up there because I think. Absolutely. If you guys are wondering about NFTs, you're like, I don't get the NFTs. What is the thing? I think he beautifully lays out a perfect analogy. And it's perfect in a sense of why, for the sake of, of laying this out. Now, will everything be 100% accurate? Not necessarily. So he puts up a little thread. He says, here's a way to understand the enormous value created by originating IP in NFTs with some help from the Incredible Hulk, Wolverine, and a time machine. Let's go. And of course, this time machine. Okay. And that's uh, a there you go, right there. there There's a the time machine, right? The old time machine there. Right so, up, so he says, hey, uh, Welcome to November 1st, 1974. We're standing at the newsstand in your hometown holding a bundle of paper, ink, and a few staples that cost a few cents to make a comic book, The Incredible Hulk number 181. 
a hundred thousand authentic original copies will be sold you paid 25 cents a quarter good call man right there it is right there that's the first episode that the and the comic book where wolverine appeared so that was like you know kind of everything's important for a first time of a character comes in there he says the comic books expected to be disposable entertainment almost no one expects to have any long-term value but this is the first moment fans get to meet the wolverine who's going to create billions of dollars of value and you're keeping your copy pristine right jeff that's it when i went off to college i know that when i got back not only did my album collection get sold for five bucks but so did my comic book collection jeff and i don't even want to tell you what i thought i had in there i had some good stuff a lot Man. of spider-man and i did have some early hulk as well so he goes on to say in uh in 2000 in 2021 fewer than 200 copies of this comic survive in mint condition and now it's worth about fifty thousand dollars but why it's still ink paper staples because the ip that began on the paper has generated billions of dollars from fans who love it with no end in sight says in short your bundle of ink paper and staples has robust demand it's able to be authenticated it's very scarce and we like that like with bitcoin it's scarce right jeff so it's worth a little bit you know it can uh, go up in value can be displayed publicly and privately to flex that you own it oh the, 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 copy 25 cents for it. it's worth 50 grand and then you spill coffee all over it, and then it's ruined right but uh can be displayed publicly and then it's very compelling store of value look at this right here check that out stocks bonds gold us dollar and then hulk 181 if you look at the orange one here jeff they're all kind of like doing their thing and boom right up there 445 yeah that's insane 100 <laughs> percent, right hulk 181 <laughs> yeah we got but disney owns the ip and so they get the billions now right Fifty thousand on a twenty-five cent investment, pretty good, but it's not the long-term value in IP ownership. And what about the Len Wynn who wrote the story, or Herb Trimpe who penciled the comic? So you've got the two guys who are responsible writing the story, illustrating the story, right? Kind of the intellectual uh, property, the IP, the creativity behind that, the thought process. Did the creators get any of that value? No, oh. nothing. But that's pretty common, though, in the art world, isn't it? I mean, you paint a PA, you paint something, you sell it. Once you've sold that copy, let's say it was limited edition, you made one, or you make prints of ten, and then that's it. Once you're once you're out, you're out. Yeah, right? but this you is different, you don't though. Get you get the on it. Yeah, but you have intellectual property here. You have the the creation, right? So you look at Stan Lee created Spider Man, right? He got all the rewards of creating Spider Man and whoever the the uh, you know the first time somebody comes up with a character, invents it, starts showing up in its own comic book. You know, it shows up in movies, everything else. So I think the point he's trying to make, you're right. I mean, it does happen that way. But he says, but here's where it gets really interesting for um, intellectual property driven NFTs. Yes, Disney owns the intellectual prop. Uh, property and collects the value today and no Lennon and herb got nothing but their salaries back in 1974 which was probably pathetic jeff by today's standards but oh, blockchain sure. tech you know blockchain technology allows for a complete realignment of this equation so let's go back to 1974 boom there you go there's the uh let's go back boom. and now so now you're standing at the new stand you pay the 25 cents but instead of working for marvel Lennon Herb used off-the-shelf tools to mint your NFT, distribute it to you. So you're paying creators directly. The platform they use to mint the comic takes a small little cut, Jeff. See how that works? And then more importantly, Lennon Herb own the intellectual property. When the global SVOD, which is a streaming video ecosystem, and its 30 billion annual content budget comes looking for stories to make a film, like, oh, what are we going to do? Make some comic book heroes uh movies or tv to sell to subscribers let and herb they win right especially if they build it on an nft you know um like two and a half or three percent every time that's sold they get a little bit, bit of a kickback so it doesn't sell for much initially but it sells for 40 million dollars and they get two or three percent of that now we're talking about some you know them getting compensated and then plus they didn't depend on the streaming video um, system to create demand so they get to keep their intellectual property and the right team can create consumer products licensed at the theme parks interactive games digital collectibles etc they retain enterprise value 
But it gets even better. With programmable NFTs, it's possible that you own a share of the value of that IP too, right? So back to 2021, now, suppose, Jeff, you take a stake in the upside of Wolverine, my guess is you're telling everybody you know about it because you're like, the value is going to go up, like the CryptoPunks is what's happening right now. And then NFTs, you're not only a fan, but you're an owner with a lifetime terminal value of a tr in a transferable, scarce, authentic asset. You're also that asset's greatest form of marketing and distribution. And now the creator fan community are all aligned. And finally, of course, not all that co story character-based NFT will be Hulk 181. And not all characters originating NFT will be Wolverine, but some will. And I'm looking forward to owning that value when they do. And I hope you will too. And I think, Jeff, that's a brilliant um, way to sort of uh, um, phrase all that. I mean, I, I love the fact of how they say because you know a lot of people are like oh i bought it i don't get it. it's an image on there but the intellectual property having that creativity behind it and then being able to um you know get a share of that i think is really great and santiago velez the infamous santiago velez comment that he says well just wait until they learn that the encrypted video nfts are coming and create literal digital scarcity around the native content itself while ensuring derivative value for the creators the revolution will be digitized and that's exactly why guys that's what where we're going with nfts in a nutshell i know it's uh i know it's pretty long but i think what do you think about his analogy there jack and well man i'm listening to this and i can't help but think about a, a man by the name of robert kearns and uh most people probably have no idea who robert kearns was uh but you use his technology every single time you get into your car and it rains and you turn on your wipers and you get the intermittent wiper, right? So this guy, and I, I'm listening to this story over the comics. I'm looking at, you know, how the, those that actually created it, wrote it, you know, drew it, illustrated it. They create it while in the employee of somebody else and they get nothing out of it, right? But they they put their blood, sweat and tears into this just because they were employed there. Why, you know, why wouldn't they get some long-term benefit? Now, as the employer, wouldn't you want them to have long-term benefit? So I think about this story of Robert Kearns, you know, and so this dates back, you know, to probably, you know, the in the 70s. Uh, actually, it was, uh, he, he filed a patent back in the 60s, right? right. So I'm just trying to get the, the years right. But he won a patent infringement lawsuit against Ford, and Chrysler and General Motors. He went after all three of them. And then after he went after the three of them, he, they, they awarded in this lawsuit, which was massive, but it took like 12 years, 12 years of fighting. But what happened is that the big, the, the big three actually took his technology, regardless of the fact that he introduced it to them and they rejected it. So I'm thinking about, you know, all of these different mechanisms of nfts of what could happen you know what an nft can actually do you know so you look at this he ends up getting an award from ford motors for 395 well he was looking for 395 million dollars in damages was awarded 10 million then he went after chrysler then he went after general motors um and then they went after all of them they went after all the all the all the manufacturers every single manufacturer in the world basically uh, and it's amazing right it's just it's amazing of what they did um but i think about something like that chip and how significant an nft can be for the patent industry for right. the illustrators for huge. everything and get a little bit of it so now there's no way you can get cheated hey you put your patent on the on the blockchain it's drafted somehow in an nft format because when you bring it to someone to sell you know or to offer it now you're tied to it forever you don't even have to rely on their accounting being accurate or not accurate because it's always going to be accurate right once they utilize it every time they have to re-up and utilize it man I, I get excited about it and i think santiago is spot on too yeah you know but i gotta tell you jeff there was a lot of damage and fallout from that a lot of stuff happened to that guy over a period of that it crushed him it really it debilitated him it became the fight of his life and you know imagine fighting something for 12 years straight and then having to you spend most of your life 
and and a fight without actually enjoying a lot of it. So there was there was yep. some uh, collateral damage there in that story, which I'm pretty familiar with as well. And then there's always this one too. Gary, Gary, Gary. So <laughs> I just had to uh, load that up, Jeff, because that's that's. Hey, you got to download that, and we're. Oh, we I did. It's 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 in there now. It's uh. Okay, cool. It's, it's all set up for future use. Oh, oh is it? Oh, nice. Oh yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Oh, I, you, oh, it's in there. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I don't mess around, Jeff. I got it right in there, and it's it's ready to go. I thought it'd be good for you know every once in a while you see something on there. You know, there's a, sometimes people venture into the skit area where they do like a little skit and sometimes it lands well. And sometimes it's like, well, that was kind of cool. But this one, I thought this one, I thought had a little bit of a a little bit of humor to it. And um, I'll tell you what my favorite part of it is. And I want to hear from you guys what your favorite part of this little video. It's a very short little video here, but I wanted to throw this up because um, it's a funny little I don't know. Sometimes there's a lot of people out there that are very talented. And I want to throw this up here. Let me throw it in. But let's watch this. This unfortunately right. is shot in vertical format because it's it was like you know a gram or you know a TikTok or something like that. But let's 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 watch this. Wonderful. Petrol. No shitcoin, Sherlock. Oh, I see a friend of mine, Sir Ethrock. Have you seen Fiat around here? <laughs> Don't worry about Bitcoin. She's just volatile because she's about to start a super cycle. Are you seriously talking to a rock? It's an ETH rock and it's worth more than you are. Yeah, in fiat, which is gross. <laughs> Richard Nixon, you son of a bitch. Oh my God, it's gold. The gold? Like the prehistoric version of you? Wow. I was trying to keep up with inflation. And then Peter Schiff caught me, trapped me in his basement. I've been there for over 10 years. <laughs> Wait, who are you guys? <laughs> Hello, brother. Yeah, so that one there was uh, none other than uh, that was uh, that you got cut off, but that was uh, Fiat there at the end there. Hello, brother. Oh my God, that's brilliant. Yeah, that is stuff. brilliant. Who is that? That is so funny. I'm not sure who that is. I mean, I, I but the best part I like this is uh, is gold <laughs> getting gold, gold finally oh, yeah. escape is the best part right here, man. Look at gold. Richard Nixon, you son of a bitch. Oh my God, it's gold. The gold? Like the prehistoric version of you? Wow. I was trying to keep up with inflation. And then Peter Schiff caught me and trapped me in his basement. I've been there for over 10 years. Peter Schiff locked me in his basement. It's good stuff, man. <laughs> that is the funniest thing ever. Who it's are good. these people? I'm man, not sure who they are, man. I love them. them on. Oh, the thing was, so somebody great. tweeted it and somebody sent it out. But yeah, it's really some brilliant <laughs> stuff. Every once in a while, you see something. I'm like, it's good stuff, man. So I play, but you guys are amazing. And yes, I'll be rich on an island with Chip and with Chip and Jeff. But Chip and Chip and Jeff. Well, that's good. I'll be on there twice. That's awesome. Two double, double the fun. That's awesome, man. But um, yeah, I really like that one. I thought that was like uh Richard Nixon. You I, I just want to like just cut that part of it out and play that every once in a while because that's some good stuff. It's so, perfect. Oh, it's awesome. And such inside baseball, Jeff. It's so like inside. You know, this kind of weird uh, stuff. Right. So here's uh, uh, Karin's uh, Grow Journal. He's saying, uh, what's the opinion around here on XRP being used as a security and then becoming a digital bearer bond of sorts uh, where the Fed could have buy buy buyback price set, potentially becoming worth more and more? So this goes back to the Fed taking. What are your thoughts? Well, I guess my question would be, what is the mechanism for them to do such a thing? Right. So, I mean, what a legal remedy, you know, like if you look through the courts, what would the legal remedy be? Hey, man, uh, you are you can find somebody. But the thing about it is what they don't realize is that all of that extra um, XRP that Ripple has stashed away. Um, the only way to get at it, because it's decentralized, I mean, they can get at it and they can release a billion here and they can, you know, every month. But it, you have to go to the validators. You got to put up a proposal and you have to get 80 percent consensus. So that's the whole point of this is that it's decentralized, right? And if you're willing to do that and the validator said no and you didn't have that, and Ripple now has, I don't know, 13%, it doesn't really matter. But I hear a lot of people talking about this, like, oh, this is the big end game because the global reset and the Illuminati and whatever other name you throw in there. And I love it. It's a great theory, but I just don't see the legal re you know, remedy of how you do that other than like, we don't like you anymore, so give us your 50 billion XRP. <laughs> 
and they could want a chip. You know, Matt LaRoche brings up a good point, though. XRP is global. You know, it's not just a right. U.S. issue. Um, I think that's important to note. However, that didn't stop them during the gold era, you know, from oh. telling people they couldn't own oh, gold. Didn't impact anybody else around the world, but it definitely did impact uh, people in the U.S. Uh, and and Caro and saying basically assuming the SEC is a show and they're letting Congress decide for us. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what your thoughts are on that, Jeff. But I just don't see. I don't see how they legally do it. You just gonna come in and say, well, you know, we want, we want, because everyone. The other the other theory is like, well, they don't. Do they really want a company being that powerful? And right now, you look at XRP. It's like, ah, eh, buck something, whatever. But what if it's a hundred dollars? What does that XRP worth? A hundred dollars times. 50 billion but let's let's back it up even further times 80 billion times 100 billion right I mean, you start getting into that but again when you're moving all the money and you've got all this stuff going on that we we we, we workshopped that that one time jeff we looked at all the money in the world it's ginormous it's it's almost hard to wrap your your head around how yeah, much money course. exists out there right yeah. so as follower, he said ideally i'd like to see it pegged to gold for global SDR, but I, I don't know, you know, I mean, they, in order for XRP, and I could be off on this one, but in order for XRP to be pegged to gold somehow, it would then require a majority of the validators to vote. And I don't even know if that's a possibility. I mean, I, at first, I don't know if they would vote for it. Secondly, I don't even know if you could do, I don't know if you could, can you change something like that? I mean, that's technically out of my realm, but uh, but the thing, as I look at it, though, I don't believe in the global SDR. You know, it's kind of a, you know, a development of the International Monetary Fund, which is an NGO, a non-governmental organization that supposedly is working on behalf of co uh, co uh, countries around the world that are in need, and they provide loans when they don't have funds. And the SDR is simply a basket of currency coming up with a valuation based on the basket of shared currency from different countries. Um, but well, you know, Jeff, I, I don't know, you know, I mean, it's, uh, Jeff, it's, a, here's, big, it's a big conversation. But here's the question, yeah. right? So you're, you're, you're bringing something up important. It's like, you know, look at Tether, like uh, we're, we're, we're pegged to the U S dollar until they're not. And I was like, well, there's the U S dollar and other stuff. And then, well, what is that other stuff? Well, then Bitcoin and you know, whatever else is part of it. The problem with that is, is if you have, you know, you look at gold, like an ounce of gold right now, and you look at it oscillating between 190 uh, or 1900 and $2,000, kind of like, it's, a, it's, it's, it's all over the place, right? But you have to, and there was there was a crypto project out there that really was making a lot of headway. It was a couple of years ago. And I remember like, we're, this is going to be the first, you know, uh, digital asset backed by gold until they realized something really important. Like, where's all the gold? Oh, shoot, we don't have the gold. Like, oh, how yeah, are you going to peg into something you need the equivalent of that in gold. So where do you get that from? How do you peg it, right? So it's a great, you know, grandiose sort of an idea. But at the end of the day, it's got to be pegged somehow, right? It definitely does, you know. So, yeah, if you're going to back it up, you know, that definitely 100%. XRP yeah, check this out. Pre-sale of tickets to XRP Island. Open invites to only one percenter. Sorry. One percenters of the... Somebody put out there on Twitter, they actually made the XRP in the shape of an XRP. They did Photoshop the whole thing with the boats coming in there. And I said, that looks awesome, but hell, man, that island's a little too thin for me. I think I need a little bit more, you know, it's like, it was just seemed like you get wiped out by one wave. It's kind of, it's kind of like XRP. Dubai, though, and when you go to Dubai, you've got the uh, Pine Island, you know, or the Pine, the Palm Tree <laughs> Pine, the Palm Tree Island. I'm thinking Pine, <laughs> like the Pine Island. I'm like, what the heck is that? The Palm Tree Island. Oh, tree Island, yeah. And you well, go there, and it's you get the little branch offs, and at the very end, you have that hotel that is all, the one hotel that's also in the Bahamas with the big arch, kind of like a pink building. You go over there, and uh, it's overlooking the uh, the ocean. Yeah, nice man. So you get a ripple I like that. I like it, and maybe it'll only be in Dubai. You get you get the uh, XRP logo. You can get a Ripple logo. You get a Bitcoin logo. You get all these That's different a, logo islands. You can about, decide where you want to live. That's a big ass island, man. That's where, where people are hanging out, having fun, little drinkage, little made. festivities. Yeah, the Look XRP at this right island. here. I like it. 
So largest crypto seizure in Brazil, nearly 29 million worth of digital assets were seized. Um, so Chip, company- I was thinking about that. Why is that significant? Go back to all the naysayers out there. Right. They keep saying that, oh, it's used for nefarious purposes. And once they use it, you can't trace or track and blah, blah, blah. You know, obviously they're thinking about fiat. Yeah. And I also like an article that rounds up a little bit. It's like the Brazilian, it started out here 28.7. Then here it's like there's a local financial pyramid scheme that confiscated nearly 30 million. I bet you if we read down further, it's like almost 40 million. And as we get to the bottom of the paragraph, that's hilarious. You know, it's like, well, now it's now, it, geez, it just went up one point three million dollars. Like, round up, Jeff. Why not, why not fifty for the next one, right? So yeah, it's a new record. Yeah, and then it was nearly thirty, and they actually confiscated twenty eight point seven. <laughs> then it's around twenty eight point seven. Before it was a fact of twenty eight point seven. Man, that's just a little loosely written. That's all. No, it's exactly right. One of the five sp- suspects uh, was uh, Gladson Axeo. Oh, I love these things. Sign me up. Um, Sign me up. An owner of Bitcoin consultancy in the municipality of Cabo Frio near Rio de Janeiro. According to the accusation, he was in charge of a cryptocurrency scam that promised investors a return up to 15% of the invested assets. Now here, Jeff, that promise of a profit, that right there has all the markings of a security. Well, and and you also load in fraud on top of it. And uh, that's where they go wrong. You know, you're promising something right there. And hey, there's no SEC down there, but they got them and they seized the Bitcoin. So I don't know if they use like thumb screws or something or like, what? Give me your keys. Give me your keys. And they're like, ah, I can't, I can't, I can't breathe. Oh, yeah, so, the thumb screws. That's a good one. Thumb screws are technique. or the water torture where they do that one drop. Bloop, bloop, they strap your head down for like, you know, 20 hours at a time. You're like, I'll yeah, say anything. Stuff. Stop the water drop. <laughs> not that i know anything about that jeff i just read books and sometimes and these things like people break up like two hours i'm just i don't know anything about that personally i don't need personal experience wow. with that now it's interesting you bring that up and then there's this other note i think it's important to reference it here other than all these ads that popped up on this thing uh we can put Streamyard in there because we're oh, using it geez. but man bets life savings on bitcoin and loses everything right and look it's written by smithers smithers, smithers. So I'm I'm looking at this right. I'm like, how does how do you first of all how do you bet? How do you bet your life savings on Bitcoin? Are you investing you in Bitcoin? And then how do you lose? Because if you put it on to Bitcoin, even if you bought it sixty, you still didn't lose it all, right? So then I'm then you read down in the article, and they and they're still talking about Bitcoin, which I think this whole article is wrong. Bitcoin is a fickle beast. And one man found out the hard way, just how fickle it can be when he lost his life savings. The unnamed Reddit user bet everything he and his partner had on the cryptocurrency, but it really didn't pay off. In a post-social media site, the man explained what happened and warned others. Writing in a Bitcoin subreddit, he said, I completely messed up, guys. My life savings are gone for good. I've learned a devastating lesson. Now, he he acquired 1.7 Bitcoin which is worth 58,000. His wife and he stashed it away. Over the course of a decade, the couple worked hard to save that money. He started future trading. Okay, there you go. That's what it was. So, he didn't Whoa. bet he didn't bet on an investment into Bitcoin. He was trading on futures and trying to leverage positions and he's a jackass. Mhm. Right? That's all it is. Right, the classic beginner luck because he was future trading, turned 1.7 into 2.1. What the what what are you doing? What are you thinking about? He's first of all, he's a beginner, doesn't know what he's doing. Everybody's falling for this, you know. At some point in time, while you're trading, I get it. But if you're gonna write this article and you're gonna spin it, spin it the right way. Of course, it didn't play out. Bitcoin went from 50k down to 47, and our whole life savings had been wiped out. What in the world is he doing? Like, right. why? It's, it's your life savings. Don't he's trying to make a quick be- a quick buck. He thinks he's smarter than the system. He isn't. If you're buying your 1.7 Bitcoin, sit on it. Shut right. the hell up. Keep putting more money into it if that's what your thing is. It's your life savings. Wait five years, you know, and see where you're at. You're never. You're not gonna. You know, if it goes to zero, then you can say, "Hey, I, I'm an asshole." You know, 
But here he's betting on futures, doesn't even know what he's doing. Talks about beginner's yeah. luck. Man, I I'm just like dumbfounded by well, stuff. Like the that. best line on there is it says he still hasn't told his wife yet. That's not going to go over very well. I can tell you right oh, now. That was, that was tough. Yeah. That's, that's going to be pain and loathing right there. That's not going to work out very well. Like, oh, yeah, you know that Bitcoin we you put our life savings into? <laughs> Funny thing happened in the future right. trading market. Exactly. But I'm not saying that, you know, the, the thing is, you know, I know from my trading experience, I've made bad trades and I should oh, have done it. Jeff? We've all done it, you know, but my, I, I guess my point of this, you know, is the article, the way they spun it is negative against Bitcoin. <laughs> Has nothing to do with the Bitcoin itself. Has everything to do with the fact that he's gambling in future trading without having any idea what he's doing with it. Super dangerous. The most experienced people get caught out there trading futures and options. Not the thing you want to do with your life savings. That, that's my opinion. It's for the short buck. Dangerous. Yeah, go ahead. Read XRP speedboats. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and read that. Man finds out he's an idiot. Lives on XRP Island. Looking for buried key. <laughs> Man. Oh my God. There's still hope. <laughs> there's still That's hope. Awesome. It was like, now, if the guy said he, well, I wanted to diversify, I want to keep my initial position of one. I put the other stuff and I diversified it before five other ones. And it's like, dude, how do you lose if you never sell? It's like, yeah, okay. If, if one of those cryptocurrencies get wiped out or you have market, you know, you have a market run and you have a pullback or something like that. But this is stupidity. It's speedboat nailed it. It's absolute stupidity there. So, <laughs> anywho. Oh, good stuff. Yeah, it's great stuff, Jeff. Yeah. And, you know, stuff. it's that time of night where we say, guys, we're going to be all, Jeff and I are going to be back together. The band's back together. We playing here all night, Sunday through Thursday, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. And then Jeff does his little shindig thing on Saturday, which is like a shit. rant. Whatever it is, a little shindig. A little a little... shindig. Do, we have, do we have a shindig? A shindig to do. It's some kind of a fun. It's a <laughs> gathering of sorts, right? We stream live Sunday through Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Chip, I, I you said that. I'm like, is did an hour go by already? What in the world happened? Oh, yeah, an hour and two and minutes, it, actually. It and yeah, you know what, Chip? Minutes. Nobody even noticed the new sign. I can't believe it. Not one person. No, we hung it up there, Jeff. Took a little but, bit of doing, you know, yeah, got, got a little ding on the back, but you can't really see it from here, which looks good. It. Only dropped. And uh, yeah, we had to get rid of the how to review because just it was, um, you know, wasn't we just had to we're pulling it all together. It's all on the chain. I used to do a little show called the XRP Minute. That's gone. We just collapsed them all. It's just on the chain, man. That's what we're doing. Boom. So, and you know what, Chip? If you hit the thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell notifier, that's a great way to help on the chain. It's amazing. The Google algorithm will love you for it. They'll love you for it. And on the chain, we'll love you too. How about that? Oh, I agree 100%. So I'm looking forward to this week. I'm happy to be back. I'm happy you guys are all here. Yeah, it's great to be back, man. I miss the banter. It was like I was running and gunning all week. And it's just kind of nice to settle back in, get the conversations rolling again, talking about technology. And, you know, we'll be doing anything else, Jeff, in the closing moments of the show. Tomorrow's another night, and we'll be back at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tomorrow. See you on the next one. Chip and Jeff out. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.